Welcome back. And we're here with David Webb, Arbor Rice, and Keith Boykin, still talking about these elections. Or talking, that's the word I'm going to use. <laughs> Spiritedly talking about these elections. And it seems to me that there's so much to contest. I mean, just in this conversation right here, there's so much that's hotly being debated. Are people that mo as motivated as you all are? Are people going to come out to the polls in a couple of days and, and, make, and make the same decisions? I, I think they are. And matter of fact, I know they are. Because when you look at who's involved right now, it's mothers who are a big part of the health care issue. They take care of the home. It's seniors, the largest and most consistent voting bloc. And the youth vote is going back and forth, whether it will or won't work for the Democrats. From a purely analytical point of view, we have a huge enthusiasm gap between the people who feel that we need to get back to a center-right governance, difference between what we are and what we're not. They don't see the progressive policies as working. They, we're not trying to blame Obama for not being able to fix it in 20 months. There is a huge problem. Arva, Arva talk about that a little bit. I mean, there clearly is an enthusiasm gap. The right is organized. They, they have tea parties. They have other organizations. They're coming to the polls. People like Christine O'Donnell are, are, have a, are legitimate contenders, and maybe five years ago they wouldn't even be on the ballot. There's a lot going on right now from the right. What is the left doing to organize? Are they doing enough? When our organization, the Reverend Al Sharpton and NAACP came together to put together our, our uh, march that we did on October 2nd, um, there wasn't as much um, attention on that. And there was as many people involved in it as some of the things that were going on in the Tea Party. So I think it's really important on the grassroots level that we encourage people that were once deemed three-fifths of a person that their vote counts mm. and that they, we make sure that they, that they come out and they're voted, that we don't demonize young people for maybe not being involved in the process but letting them know that they matter, their vote matters. We want to make sure that they're there, that we see them standing online and they're casting their votes. Okay, I mean, what about the messaging part of this? What is the left doing to promote their stuff? I think that there's not really an enthusiasm gap out there. There's a media hype gap. Yes. The media hype that keeps telling people that the, the Democrats aren't going to show up, the liberals aren't going to show up, or the black people and the Hispanics aren't going to show up. The reality is those people are going to show up, and especially in some states, it could make a big difference. There are three statewide African-American candidates who are running for office in Florida, South Carolina, and Massachusetts, South Carolina and Florida, they're probably not going to win. But it will have an impact in Florida in terms of the governor's race in Massachusetts, electing the black governor, Deval Patrick, and re-electing him. In California and Texas, Illinois and Pennsylvania, the black vote could make a huge difference. So African-Americans have to, to know that it's important to come out. If they want to support Barack Obama, he needs people there to help push his agenda. He needs those people in those states. What we have to do right now, because we're running out of time, is I need some predictions from you all. The people want to know who's going to win. Are we going to lose or have a shift in the balance of power in Washington? Are Democrats going to sustain it? Are Republicans going to take over? What's going to happen? Really quick, starting with you, Keith, what's going to happen? I wanted to be last. I know, I know you did. <laughs> um, I, I definitely think the Democrats are going to maintain control of the Senate. I think uh, they're definitely going to lose seats in the House. I'm not sure they're going to lose the House itself. I'm hoping that they don't. And I think they, the Republicans are going to pick up some seats in the gubernatorial positions. But don't be surprised if there are some surprises out there. Look for Russ Feingold in Wisconsin as a possible surprise. Joe Sestak in Pennsylvania as a possible surprise. Alex Sink, the Democratic governor candidate in, in Florida, as a possible surprise. So and maybe somebody from the Ren is too damn high party. Uh, maybe. Jimmy McMillan. <laughs> <laughs> who knows? Barbara, <laughs> <laughs> <No, laughs> no. yeah. what do you say? I absolutely think that the, the Democrats will maintain control as well. I think that the uh, gubernatorial seats are absolutely important, particularly if, as there's a push for federal monies to come down to the state level. And so that's very important, and African Americans and, um, and others need to be partic particularly mindful of that and its impact. Um, and I, uh, I'm definitely looking for a Democratic governor in New York, where I'm from, so I uh, look forward to that as well. Okay, and David? I think realistically we're looking at about 43 to 55 seats by the Republicans in the House. Senate's going to be a tough race. Seven looks possible. They need 10. I don't think they're going to get it, but nobody can tell the final vote. Uh, 37 governor's races are up right now, and that's very important for 2012. It's very important for the redistricting process and other things. And I think the Republicans look to pick up probably 11 to 12 gubernatorial seats in that range. But here's something important about this election. There are 20-something races on the congressional level that will be decided by about 1,500 votes. Or, to, you know, that's a very tight race, and I think it's going to be a fun night. It's definitely going to be an exciting night. It sounds like it's going to be a competitive one. And ultimately, it's going to come down to whether or not people vote. So hopefully people will come out and support the democratic process. And we'll, we'll, we'll see what happens. We'll be right back.